Have you ever wondered why China can build and launch rockets so fast? I mean, isn't that something that usually takes years or even decades of development? Well, what if I told you that you haven't even seen the full picture yet? China has basically found a cheat code for mass producing rockets, kind of like how cars are made on a production line. The potential is huge. Some people even say that one day, China could rival or even surpass big names like SpaceX. So how are they doing it? From Launch Complex 101 at the Wenchang Space Launch Site, a long March 5 roared into the night sky on December 20th, carrying a single payload toward geostationary transfer orbit. For the fourth time, the rocket flew with the longer 18.5-meter fairing normally reserved for the Long March 5B. That fairing has been getting a workout lately. Just two months earlier, in October, it was used to launch a TJSW communications technology test satellite to GTO, much like a similar mission in February 2024. Before that, a December 2023 launch carried a Yao Gan optical remote sensing satellite, also headed for geostationary transfer orbit. This mission marked the 10th flight of the Long March 5, the 17th launch of the Long March 5 family, and the 618th launch overall for the Long March rocket series. It was also China's 88th launch of 2025. It is concerning how fast they've done it, said Brigadier. General Brian Sadari, Deputy Chief of Space Operations for Intelligence with the U.S. Space Force, speaking last month at the Air and Space Forces Association's Air, Space, and Cyber Conference. China, he added, understands the importance of space after studying how we enable the joint force with those space-based capabilities. China's launch tempo has jumped by more than 30 percent compared to last year. After placing around 200 satellites into orbit in 2023, the country has now doubled its orbital payloads year over year. At the same time, it's building two large low-Earth orbit constellations that in some ways resemble Elon Musk's Starlink. These are just a few signs of how quickly China is moving through its five-year national space strategy. New launch vehicles are coming online, satellites are being upgraded at a rapid pace, and new launch pads are being built, not just for more missions, but for faster ones too. And most people don't realize this is only the beginning of something even crazier. Scientists in China say the country is entering a new era of aerospace manufacturing by changing how rockets and satellites are built. The goal is to make space hardware as efficiently as cars are made in auto factories, rather than treating each rocket as a slow, custom-built project. This shift is based on a system called Final Assembly Pull, inspired by lean manufacturing in the automotive industry. Instead of building parts far in advance and storing them, Final Assembly only pulls in components when they are actually needed. That demand signal then moves backward through the supply chain, so subsystems, individual parts, and even raw materials are produced only when required. Traditionally, aerospace manufacturing used a push system, where components were made based on launch forecasts and long-term schedules. This often caused delays, wasted money, and large stockpiles of unused parts when plans changed. The pull system is more flexible and efficient, reducing excess inventory, cutting down on bottlenecks, and speeding up overall production. For better visualization, you can imagine a sandwich shop. In a push system, the shop guesses how many sandwiches people might buy that day. In the morning, workers make 100 sandwiches and put them on the shelf. If only 60 people show up, 40 sandwiches are wasted. If 140 people show up, the shop runs out and customers have to wait. The shop is constantly guessing and often gets it wrong. In a pull system, no sandwiches are made in advance. When a customer orders a sandwich, the worker starts making it. That order then pulls bread, meat, and vegetables from the kitchen only at that moment. Nothing is made unless someone actually wants it, so there's less waste and fewer shortages. Now apply that to rockets. In the old push system, a factory might build engines, fuel tanks, and electronics months or years ahead of time based on a launch plan. If the launch is delayed or redesigned, those parts sit in storage or become unusable. In the pull system, final rocket assembly can say, we are building a Falcon 9 booster right now and need nine engines. That request triggers engine production. Engine production then triggers parts and materials production. Everything moves because something downstream actually needs it, not because someone guessed it might be needed. 
That's why the pull system is faster and cheaper when you're trying to build lots of rockets, just like it works better for fast food, cars, and other mass-produced products. China wants this change because it needs to scale up its space industry to compete with the United States. In 2024, the U.S. launched 158 missions to orbit, mostly through SpaceX, while China completed 68. As space becomes more economically important, with global launch demand expected to grow dramatically by 2045, slow and handcrafted production methods are no longer enough. Under the new system, China's space industry will operate as a coordinated national network. State-owned enterprises, research institutes, and private suppliers will all be connected through digital platforms that provide real-time visibility across the supply chain. Smart factories using AI and robotics will be able to reconfigure assembly lines instead of relying on fixed, one-size-fits-all production setups. According to China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, this represents a disruptive transformation of how rockets and satellites are made. By adopting modular, flexible manufacturing and a pull-based supply chain, China aims to produce space hardware faster, cheaper, and at much larger scales. This approach is especially important for building massive satellite constellations like Guowang, Qianfan, and Hongtu-3, which are central to China's efforts to challenge SpaceX's dominance in orbit. For most of the 21st century, the American space industry has lived by a simple idea, fail fast, learn faster. Private companies in the U.S. have constantly pushed limits, building better rockets, launching huge numbers of satellites into low Earth orbit, and finding new ways to use space data. That mindset is a big reason the U.S. became the leader in modern spaceflight. But the U.S. isn't alone at the front anymore. China has been watching closely and taking notes. After seeing how American space startups operate, China has started building its own fast-moving commercial space industry. For a long time, China's space efforts were mostly run by state-owned companies. Now, the government is leaning more on private companies to help reach its goal of becoming the world's top space power, and it's backing them with easier rules and steady investment. That shift has caught the attention of the U.S. and its allies. As companies on both sides race to launch more satellites, build better rockets, and expand space infrastructure, whoever moves faster could end up shaping how the world connects, communicates, and operates in space for decades. China's push didn't happen overnight. In 2014, the government opened parts of its space industry, like Earth observation and launches, to private money. Over the next 10 years, it kept turning up support. Policies encouraged innovation, cleared up confusing regulations, opened government contracts to private firms, and officially labeled commercial space a strategic industry. By 2025, China's space agency was already working on a long-term plan for 2026 to 2035 that could make launches easier to license and give private companies access to major test facilities that used to be off-limits. The result is that hundreds of Chinese space startups have popped up, backed by venture capital. They're working on everything from rockets and satellites to communications, on-orbit services, engines, and even space-grade computer chips. These companies can serve both civilian and military needs, and they're a big reason China is closing the gap with the U.S. in space. Right now, China's biggest bottleneck isn't ideas, it's launches. Even though launch numbers are climbing, 68 rockets and 270 satellites last year, that pace isn't nearly fast enough to support plans for tens of thousands of satellites. For comparison, SpaceX alone launched more than twice as many rockets in 2024 as China did as a whole. Most Chinese launches still rely on Long March rockets, which mainly serve government and science missions. Their launch pads are limited, and commercial customers often have to wait their turn. That leaves private companies relying on a commercial launch sector that's still growing and ironing out reliability issues. But that's changing fast. Dozens of Chinese launch startups are racing to fix the problem. Companies like Kaz Space and Land Space are rolling out rockets with reusable first stages this year, aiming to launch more often and cut costs. Newer players like Cosmo Leap and Yushi Space are going even further, planning to catch returning rockets mid-air using chopstick-style arms, similar to what SpaceX is experimenting with. China is also upgrading its space infrastructure. One big step is the opening of the country's first dedicated commercial spaceport on Hainan Island, which should make it easier for private companies to get their rockets into orbit without waiting in line. 
Right now, China's launch capacity still lags behind the U.S. and other Western nations, but it's on track to grow quickly. More launch capacity means Chinese satellite companies, many of which can serve both civilian and military purposes, will get easier access to space. It also gives the military more options for fast, tactical launches if needed, and it sets the stage for China to build the infrastructure it will need to compete in the emerging lunar economy. China isn't just catching up, it's building the tools to move even faster. Looking at how fast China is moving, a natural question is, could the US do the same? SpaceX is moving incredibly quickly, but what about everyone else? China can push forward with so many companies testing reusable rockets, some similar to Falcon 9, some like Starship, and some a mix of both. So why isn't the same thing happening in the US or Europe? Why aren't more companies in the US just copying the Falcon 9 model like China has done? Over the past decade, a lot of companies have tried. Firefly, Sierra Nevada, Stoke, Relativity, Blue Origin, Virgin Orbit, all have done cool engineering work, but none of them have had the line out the door of investors the way SpaceX does, and so far, none have become really successful businesses. SpaceX really is unique in the US. One reason could be that in China, being reusable and made in China is enough to attract attention and support. In the US though, any new company trying to copy Falcon 9 immediately faces the original. A company that invented the design already has scale and dominates the market. Investors might think, why spend hundreds of millions just to fight SpaceX head on? Some people are more optimistic though. They argue that if a company said, we can make a rocket that matches Falcon 9, there would still be investors willing to back it. You don't have to be the absolute best to get customers. Even with reuse and rapid launch cadence, Falcon 9 can't supply all the demand out there. And even when Starship is fully operational, it still probably won't cover every need. There will always be custom schedules, special orbits, or other demands SpaceX can't meet. The tricky part is this. Even if a new U.S. company could compete with SpaceX, during development, someone else might come along with a slightly improved design, something that fixes Falcon 9's weaknesses. At that point, competing becomes even harder. 